Kelsey and you're watching this week's DJPTV. Coming up to you on this week's show, we have an interview with the Head of Franchise Development at Remedy Entertainment and he's telling us a little bit more about Alan Wake Cummings PC. And we take a look at Mass Effect 3 Multiplayer. We fight or we die, that's the point. But first up is a full video review of Kingdom of Amalore Reckoning. Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning is the latest game to go up against RPG juggernauts such as Mass Effect, Final Fantasy, Fallout and The Elder Scrolls. It might be the new kid in class, but with the likes of game designer Ken Rolston, artist Todd McFarlane and author R.A. Salvatore behind it, you might want to think twice before giving this kid a hard time and taking his dinner money. Your first experience of Amalore is as a corpse. Yes, you start the game off as being very dead. That is until you're resurrected in something called the Well of Souls. It's here that the game teaches you the basics before letting you loose on such an expansive world that it easily rivals the recent RPG masterpiece that is Skyrim. In the world of Amalur, it's believed that all living things follow a predetermined fate from the very moment they are conceived. That is, until you rise from the dead, having lived your life once and served your purpose in the world already. Still, it wasn't her fate to die here. Please. With fate not having any kind of plan for you, you're free to create your own destiny and also rewrite those of everywhere in the world, which has you becoming both feared and respected. I will fight. And if I die, I die knowing that I have made the choice. The easiest way to describe Kingdoms is think of an Elder Scrolls game set in the world of Fable. It leans heavily on the RPG side, but equally as much on action. At times, you could easily forget you're playing an RPG and think of Amalur as more of a hack and slash game. And, while on the topic of action, the combat works very well with some great visual flourishes that always make you feel like a real badass. The true beauty of Kingdoms is the freedom of choice it offers, giving you complete control of your character from its look right through to the combat and abilities. It's very deep as an RPG, but also has all the fun of a top action game. The sheer size and scope of the game will keep you busy for a long while, and dare I say it, a lot longer than Skyrim would have done. The downside of Amalur is that the world, the setting and the hundreds of characters you meet along the way are all very generic and nothing you probably haven't seen a million times before. But if you love the traditional fantasy setting, expansive RPGs and great action, then Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning is certainly a title worth picking up. So my name's Oscar Hacking and you can just call me Oz and I'm the head of franchise development at Remedy. Um, PC gaming is definitely part of our heritage at Remedy. Um, back from Death Rally, uh, Max Payne 1 and Max Payne 2. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a really important part of our studio and, and uh, close to our development team's heart. So, um, you know, 
was super excited to be bringing Alan Wake finally out on the PC and it's coming to Steam on the 16th of February. Great! I had to figure a way out of this. Any second now and Stucky would be knocking on the door with his axe like Nicholson in The Shining. We've spent a lot of time getting this right. Um, not just doing a simple port but doing the PC version justice. So there's a lot of graphical improvements um, for the PC version. Um, we've added some cool features like uh, some of, one of the features that was asked for on the Xbox 360 version was uh, remove HUD. Uh, people wanted uh, to get into this immersive gaming experience. Um, so we've put that feature there. Uh, we've put some support for stereoscopic 3D. Um, it's pretty niche. Uh, not many people have stereoscopic 3D setups at home, but those that do will definitely enjoy it. It's, it looks pretty damn cool. Um, and it supports multi-screen as well. Uh, yeah, so in general for the PC version, you're, you can expect high, higher fidelity uh, all round. We've, we really wanted to do the PC version justice. So yes, we have two separate versions uh, coming to both digital and to retail. We have the standard and the limited collector's edition and both versions will include uh, the DLCs, the signal and the writer. Now um, for the digital uh, versions, the standard uh, version, like I said, includes the DLCs. Uh, the limited collector's edition includes the DLCs plus the uh, developer documentary. Uh, it includes um, dev development uh, diaries. Um, as well as the uh, Alan Wake Files book that uh, was included in the Xbox 360 Limited Collector's Edition as well, as well as the, the soundtrack. Now for the retail version we're doing something really uh, quite special for those people that have been waiting a long time for Alan Wake of course. Um, on the retail side the standard edition is, well it's not really a standard edition, it's a better than standard edition. Uh, it's got the game, the DLCs, we've got stickers in there, we've got postcards, uh, we have a poster and we're including the soundtrack as well um, to the better than standard edition and for the limited collects edition there's all of the above but the developer diaries, uh, the developer commentary and uh, the Alan Wake Files book included in that as well. So Alan Wake is coming out to PC on the 16th of February, uh, available on Steam, shortly followed with a retail release on March the 2nd. Yes, all right. available on PC on the 16th February for Steam. A box edition and other digital editions will be available shortly after that. So when we heard about Mass Effect 3 having multiplayer, we were sceptical to say the least. But with the demo finally being live on Xbox Live and PSN, we decided to check it out. Here's what we thought of it. With Mass Effect 3 now under a month from release, EA have decided that the time is right to release a demo for the upcoming finale to the trilogy. With single player coverage not exactly hard to find on the internet, we decided to take a look at the multiplayer side of the demo. Two members of the Daily Joypad team sat down with two friends and gave this additional but welcome component a try. <laughs> Mm. 
In the demo, the main focus is to survive a set number of enemy waves whilst simultaneously attempting to complete side objectives. These vary between activating beacons, killing set targets, hacking devices and more. Whilst easy enough sounding on paper, actually completing the task can be a challenge and attempting to do so alone can result in your untimely death. I'm injured! Squad member offline! The enemies that you face whilst fighting for survival vary as you play. When you first start out a game, you'll face generic soldiers who fall easily and aren't equipped with shields, barriers or armour. As you progress, heavily armoured opponents will appear in increasing numbers and large mechs known as atlases will join the fray and make life even tougher for you. Taking these tougher enemies down while staying alive will prove difficult, but surviving until extraction is highly rewarding as you net massive EXP and credit bonuses. Like other multiplayer shooters, playing well will gain you experience points and credits. These can be spent on strengthening your character and acquiring new weapons, accessories and even additional characters to players. Completing additional challenges including killing set numbers of enemies, reviving teammates or getting assists will also net you EXP boosts. Akin to the single player campaign, you can choose between a number of classes, each with their own abilities and skills such as the soldier who relies on brute force and can use any weapon, or the vanguard who uses lighter weaponry but has access to biotic skills including a charge attack and a pull move which levitates enemies making them unable to fight back. Despite only being a side dish to the main course that is the single player campaign, Mass Effect 3's multiplayer is surprisingly enjoyable and is robust enough to sustain repeated plays. Even though the demo has only two playable maps, each additional go never felt like merely a repeat and instead was highly enjoyable. It does have to be said that playing with friends is best as if you're paired with someone who has an unstable internet connection, the slight lag can be off-putting, especially when using melee attacks. <laughs> If you want to try the multiplayer demo for Mass Effect 3, head for the PlayStation Store, Xbox Live or EA's PC Origin service and give it a go now. Mass Effect 3 will hit stores on March 9th. and be sure to check out the full game on the 9th of March when it's released on Xbox, PS3 and PC. As usual, thank you for watching DJP TV. Hope you have a lovely week and don't forget to check out dailyjoypad.co.uk for the latest news, reviews and previews and like us on Facebook for more interaction. Thank you for watching. Bye!